Being able to back your horse up might seem like an elementary movement, but backing a horse of any age can present challenges. Brian Newbert offers some suggestions on how to prepare and back a horse with little experience under the saddle and also a horse with more experience. He discusses different approaches for both stages of horse that can help you and your horse be successful. I wanted to visit a little about backing and uh, just got this horse in last night really because I knew Emily was coming but uh, started him last, sum uh, last summer and I, I didn't count but I probably a dozen rides maybe and very short ones so he is real green, he's real gentle and um, I've never asked him to back, and I could have, all right, and I used to, when I start one, like back them very early. And uh, well, when I worked for Ray Hunt, we backed everything on the first ride. And then later, spent some time with another fella that, uh, Tom Dorrance, and he, <laughs> I noticed that he didn't back his horses up sometimes for well, one time we were riding together and I said, I don't believe I ever saw you back that horse up. And he said, that's probably because I never have. And I said, what do you got, like 20 rides on him and you've never backed him up? And he said, Brian, you can l teach one to back anytime. Like, it's so much more important to help him learn to go through troubling places and all that. And I've done a little bit on this guy. Actually, this is the first time I've ever been on him. It wasn't in a, in a smaller pen, but he's real gentle. I could have, but I just, I just put little five-minute rides on him at times and just tried to get him, a couple of them started. When he, as soon as he turns loose with that hindquarters, it's important that I turn loose with my hand. So he thinks that, that uh, what he's doing got him release. It's not, a, it's not after he tries, it's as he tries. It's not like a reward, it's like he's rewarding himself. Seems to me that it's a little easier to help one learn to back or get soft in here if their neck is bent just a little bit like this. Because it's almost like what I did with one rein. And it seems to me that it's a little harder for him to stay rigid if his neck is bent. Let's see, if I'm gonna lean back here and kind of exaggerate it here. Not a big deal. Now, what's very important here, see I'll just wait right here, he hung there, turn it loose right there. It's very, very important that I recognize his efforts and ease off. It's very easy to get greedy right here and say, well, boy, you back the step, can you back two or three? And I'll just lean back here and see he's, he, he doesn't know what to do. Good, I'll take it. Now, in the, in the, in the uh, there he gave me one that I didn't ask for. In the uh, coming rides, I might back quite a few times, but not quite a few steps. Like it's really important that I ease off when he's trying, not waiting for him to die out. Good. I might have... Good. Give him a lick here. There he gave me another step I didn't ask for. He's getting proud of himself. Now here, if he doesn't get soft, then I might ask him to get soft and don't even worry about backing. Maybe I'll step up here a few times, up and back. I can feel him thinking about it, wanting to stop or back again. He's like the kid with a new toy. Now what I could do is give him a little break, ride him around and, uh, and, and, and test him again, but you can see he's kind of trying, he's thinking about this. And so while he's thinking about it, it seems like I want to go do something else. And, um, show you a little something here before I quit on this horse. Uh, you could, on the ground, I mean, if I was going to be asking him to back up, um, might do a little of this every time I saddle up and unsaddle. Just take him right here and uh, come soft and just ask him to, and tease him, just like I did when I was on his back. Put some pressure here and just wait for him to find his way off. He said, I don't know how to do this on the ground from this other side, but I just wait on him. When he does that, give him a lick and start over. That was much better. He's gonna catch up quick. 
Don't nearly need very many steps, but I, the one thing I'm concentrating on is quitting whatever, however I'm going about this when he's trying. Don't, don't get greedy. Let's see what he's got here. I want him to be responsive. Um, also would want uh, him to be soft in the bridle. Also would want cadence in the feet. Also would want him straight. Also eventually want him to have some speed in there, but if he has those other things, the speed's gonna be given anyway. It's not a big deal. And I wanna see if I can get him to get freer, lighter on my hands. Here, that felt better. That didn't feel too bad. Only he had a low wear in his steps. I wanna make sure he's free like, well, I went too far. Not too bad right there. Very, very, very important that I quit when he is putting out some effort. It, that's the difference between a drilling process and a learning process. I mentioned uh, cadence in the feet. And a lot of horses you see don't have, why would I want cadence in the feet? Well, if you ever get a chance to see a horse back on his own, which you don't too often, but if he's, um, <laughs> Maybe he's with some other horses and going to back out to go get a drink or, or maybe he's backing up to kick another horse or a lot of horses you see come flying out of the trailer and they're kind of really taking over. But if you'll notice, they'll be backing just like they trot with two feet on the ground, two feet off the ground. And the, uh, the reason I would want that cadence is because it's the best chance to imitate nature. Like the creator of horses uh, put that in there. That's the way they do when they're on their own. So that's what I want to imitate. Maybe so. I'll visit first about uh, straightness. Like it seems to me that um, if they back crooked, which like I mentioned on my first timer, I don't really care. Like he can do it my thing his way. I won't be too critical. If he's trying to get off my hands, good enough for me. But a lot of times horses will back crooked. Why does it matter? You know what? If they back crooked, they're probably going to stop crooked. If they stop crooked, they're not going to stop very good. Like they can cease forward motion, but for a horse to really get stopped, they got to be balanced. Good. Good enough. Here, if I, good enough. See, that's feeling a lot better. I don't need to back up halfway across the arena here. When he's putting out that kind of effort, I want to let him know you got it. Here, drag around, drag, good. Now hold up, let's see how little I can do here. As this comes up here, if he doesn't start helping, good. Okay, he's had this before, and like on a first timer on this, when I was mentioning that I'm not going to ask him to back, it wouldn't bother me if they're a minute or two around here, and I'm doing it on one side and the other before they even get the thought to back up. But if I feel the thought to back up, I'm giving them total relief. I mean, if they even shift their weight, I'm giving it relief. I, I use another little thing here that's been a big help to me. And uh, actually a fellow named Ray Hunt showed me this. I've never seen him help anybody with it at the clinics. Doing that little quick review. Um, off my hands. Uh, soft in the bridle, which those two are connected pretty much. Cadence in the feet, the way God intended. Um, straightness, very important. And um, uh, speed, but you get those others going, speed's easy. And where I have in the past, and I know other people do if I have, start asking for more speed than what they're ready for a little too early. Like, I don't even worry about that. So, anyway, that's good enough for this guy.